Hi, welcome, Lachelle. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. So as you know, we are really, really excited about the University for Life Coach Training. One of the things I'm most excited about is the amazing faculty that I get to teach alongside. And you, of course, are one of our instructors. Thank you for being part of this. You're welcome. My, my pleasure. I was very happy to be able to take advantage of this opportunity. I, I love helping people who want to be in the helping industry. Ooh, 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 yes. <laughs> so um, let's talk a little bit about your experience, because sure. one of the reasons I invited you to be on the faculty is that you have an educational background and a teaching background that I think is unique. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I've been... Um, working as a licensed master social worker for about 21 years now, maybe a little longer. But um, so my education is in sociology, social work, human behavior. Um, and clinically, I was clinically trained at NYU to work with humans in all their challenges, which I absolutely <laughs> love. And I've done so, you know, for more than 20 years with a variety of groups of people and individuals largely women, right? Because women tend to go for more help and assistance more readily than men. But I've worked with people as young as three and four, all the way up to senior citizens who are working on their new transition in life or grandparenting as a full-time parent and things of that nature and everything in between. So I've had a, a vast majority of experience in the field of helping others. And currently, I also contribute to the field as a teaching professor at Columbia University. Right. Um, so I teach at their graduate school of social work, where I teach students in the field as they actually do the hands-on work um, with coaching, counseling, um, and supporting families in a very uh, concrete way it, with, as they you know, address systems that they have to work with. So I teach them and train them and guide them in that way. And I've been doing that for the last five years wow. and I love it. So my hands are always rooted in being able to guide people through being practitioners in the helping community. Right. And you're also a coach. You have a private practice as well. Yes, I do. I have a private practice where I have a pretty thriving life coaching business, which I use a lot of my therapeutic tools in, but the style of it is really coaching. I think everything I do is really more coaching than anything else. Even as a professor, I'm more of a coach. Right. Um, so it is, it is the vein of work that is suited to who I am and my style of how I communicate with people. I'm so excited for our students to experience you. And so given what you know about um, social work and coaching and all the work that you've been doing for a couple of decades, what do you hope, what kind of impact do you hope you have on the students that we train? Ooh, there are many. Um, one is I hope to help them get comfortable using themselves as a tool. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you coach people, what you feel internally as a person is sharing with you what their challenges are is a tool you can use. Your internal reactions is a tool you can use that is very helpful in the process. The challenge with using that tool is finding a way to acknowledge it without judging it mm. and really sitting in it honestly to help you with how you approach the person you're trying to support and serve. So I'm very excited about that. That's really sort of one of my specialties. And the other thing I love to do when I'm helping people in this way and teaching people in this way is really helping them get comfortable with themselves, mm. right? And who they are. Coaching people will bring up a lot of insecurities in you. Yeah. And so in your training as a coach, you really have to learn who you are and find a way to accept all the parts of who you are so that you can use them in a way that is unbiased, but real mm -hmm. um, to help people manage what they're dealing with and evolve out of their traumas in reality, because that's what we're stuck with. You know, coaching, you can coach in a bubble, but you and that person have to go back out into reality. So what you're feeling is real and it can be a real tool inside the work. Mm, I love the way that you say that because that was one of my biggest struggles as a brand new coach 
was accepting who I was and not trying to pretend to be this version of a perfect life coach. Yep. And, it, exactly. and I was exhausted. Yes, was exhausted. <laughs> um, and once I, <laughs> once I yeah. figured out what I was doing there and learned how to grow into myself, accept yep. who I was, um, all of a sudden my coaching became so much more impactful, so much more yes. authentic. So much I more can authentic. relate. I remember coaching. I had a position where I was coaching and counseling parents before mm -hmm. I was a parent. Oh, wow. And I was so uncomfortable mm -hmm. because I was like, well, how do I know? Because I'm not a parent. Right. But mm -hmm. there were things that I knew even as a child. Yeah. Yeah being parented that were so useful in the work. But I had to get to this place where I accepted, no, you're not a parent, but you do have value to share about this journey this person is on. And right. so again, it's exhausting to try to hold this role that you set up for yourself and not really just sit in your authenticity and use that as your tool. Right. Yeah. So beautiful. Now, if there are so many things, I have my own ideas okay. um, as we are finalizing this curriculum of, of what I would love for you to teach. But if I were to say, Lachelle, you pick out your top two topics and you yep. get to teach whatever you want, what would yep. you say? My top two would be self-exploration mm -hmm. of yourself as a coach and as mm -hmm. a human, mm -hmm. and then how to help your clients move through their current traumas with future focus and vision. Ooh. So yep. this is such an important thing because that's typically not paired together. Yep. Helping your clients with trauma with future focused vision. Yep. yep. Right. Which, what do you think within the coaching industry is missing with mm -hmm. that discussion that you bring to it? What is missing is this. So when people come to us, we are very focused and present on what they bring into the room. Mm -hmm. And often that is their biggest, most heaviest emotional burdens and traumas. Mm -hmm. But the thing, there's a stuckness to that, right? Mm -hmm. There's a space to talk about it, but a healthy way to expand is when you help them see and imagine moments beyond this point. Mm. Right. It, it forces a movement in them that has some hope attached to it, even though the reality of what they're dealing with right now is quite heavy. Mm -hmm. But often the thing that holds our clients stuck is that they can't move beyond where they are. They're stuck with the trauma that's in front of them. And they don't realize that even tripping through life is forward movement. Ah! Uh, tripping, and, tripping forward, falling forward. Yeah. Always. Right. And so if you're going to trip, which you are, where do you want to be when you land? Mm -hmm. Right. Where do you want to be when you take this challenging step? What does that look like over there? That starts to anchor them in a future moment that provides them with some hope and a little bit more juice in their batteries mm. to help them push through this current moment which feels sometimes insurmountable to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really missing. You know, it's the reason that I'm really, my style is coaching over being like a traditional therapist because right. I don't like to spend a lot of time going through your history. Right. I just want to know what you are feeling now mm -hmm. and what part of your history plays a role in that. But I don't really want to spend a lot of time talking about, you know, what went on when you were seven, right? Right. How do you feel right now? Does any of that connect to when you were seven? Okay, what happened? Okay, let's talk about how it's landing in your life right now. Right, how's right? it showing up today? How's it showing up today? Mm -hmm. And then let's work on that because what I do know and I will teach is how you feel controls how you show up in your environment. It controls the decisions you make. It controls how quickly you react or that you decide not to react. It controls what you say yes to and what you say no to. Mm -hmm. And all of those choices paint and design the life you're gonna experience. 
So if you can get a handle on your emotions, become aware of them, not be overwhelmed by them, you can make decisions that are going to have you experience the best version of a life that you hope for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so true. Everything you just said, like a year ago, when I started thinking about everything that's happening or that has happened this year. I had no idea the pandemic was going to happen. Nope. I had no idea, you know, how messy it was going to be. But I did know that launching the agency, marketing agency within my company, launching a university, mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I, it's going to be clumsy. Even without the pandemic, that's, I was like, right. it's probably, probably going to be clumsy. And I, we're just going to, it's going to be awkward. Yep. And we're just going to do it. Like we're going to build it as we fly. Right. And, yeah. and throw in the pandemic and everything else. And, and like you said, like staying anchored to that future vision. But, mm -hmm. but when I log on to zoom and see all those new coaches faces yeah. that we're going to help create yeah. careers and learn yeah. new tools, like that's what keeps me future. Focused. That's right. Yep. Yep, tripping forward. You just, okay, you trip, but that's still forward movement. What do you think, Lachelle, is your um, theme song for your uh, jaunt with the university? Oh, wow, that's a good question. <laughs> wow, my theme song. Oh, wow. I know there's so Gosh. many good ones. There's so many good songs. Mm, gosh, I don't know what my theme song will be. You know, what's so funny. My, what keeps popping in my mind and I don't even, there's no song named this, I don't think, but it's perspective, mm. right? Perspective mm -hmm. is so, that is the theme to what I'm going to contribute in the university mm -hmm. because we all come from our own perspectives, but we're learning very, very clearly this year, especially, we have to make space to connect and communicate with people with respecting our own perspective, but being with an open ear to understanding their perspective. Mm -hmm. There's so much that can happen in a space where we are opening the doors for all perspectives. It's like, it is literally my magic sauce is helping people understand that their perspective is useful and powerful, but can be a barrier mm -hmm. to helping others, right? We have to condition ourselves to be greedy and hungry for other people's perspectives. I love the way you say that greedy and hungry for other people's perspectives instead of resistant and combative. No. Um, you know, and, and part of a, a huge part, obviously, of the university is diversity, inclusion, and equity training, and, and helping people move from apathy um, to awareness, to um, advocate, to yep. um, ally, yep. and, and understanding that as they climb that ladder, it, everything becomes so much richer by understanding perspectives. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's not easy. It. It's not easy, but it is amazing because the more you do it in the service of who you're helping, mm -hmm. the more you get it too. Right. You grow. You know, right. I've grown exponentially as a person being in this career. Mm -hmm. um, it, I have learned things about others, which taught me so much about myself. Yeah. And it just expands me, you know, if, if I, if I could design a body to fit the expansion, I'd probably be about 15 feet tall. <laughs> well, I was, I was saying to, to someone like maybe it was two months ago when I was really in the throes of, of work, trying to digest, like get out of my brain, some of the tools I wanted to teach. And we have curriculum specialists mm -hmm. helping. And, and I said, I just feel like from all this growth, mm -hmm. I'm wearing a sweater that doesn't fit anymore. Small. Like I have just like, like swollen. Yes. You know, it's like, it can't be contained. Exactly. I'm so excited about it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, I thank you for being part of it. 
No problem. It's my great pleasure. I'm very excited about this. I think it is necessary and it's needed. And I think that what we've been through this year has put a lot of people in a position to want to really be tools of helping. And this is a great way for people to get that kind of start and have a solid foundation um, to be a helper in this world. Such a great point, right? Like now more than ever in history, Yep. Um, if people are looking to recreate themselves, find a new career, want to make a difference in the world, yep. this is definitely the training to take. Yes, it is 100%. And I couldn't be happier about being a part of it. 